This is the example appendix for lecture one. In this video, we'll look at how we can calculate the consumer price index, the GDP deflator, and inflation using a couple of simple examples. We'll start with a simple economy that has two goods, pizzas and CDs, and here are their prices and quantities for the years 2015 to 2018. We'll calculate the CPI and the GDP deflator for all four years. We'll use 2015 as the base year, and then we'll calculate inflation for 2017 using the CPI and 2018 using the GDP deflator. Let's look at some notation first. We're interested in prices and quantities. We'll use the subscript to indicate the good and the superscript to indicate the year that that variable uh, took place. A couple of examples. Here we have quantity of pizzas for 2015. And in this case, we'll have the price of CDs in 2017. This is the formula for the CPI. When we calculate the consumer price index, we use a basket of goods, usually the basket from the base year. And so we look at the cost of that basket of goods in the base year. It's the base year cost of the basket of goods. That's the denominator. We consider the same basket of goods and how much it'll cost for the year we're calculating the CPI. That's the numerator. Take that ratio and multiply by 100. And that's our index for a particular year or month. If we use 2015 as our base year, uh, then we'll have the cost of our basket of goods in 2015 in the denominator. So our basket of goods is the 2015 quantity of pizzas and the 2015 quantity of CDs. We take that same basket and then multiply those quantities by the corresponding price for the year that we're calculating the index for, 2016 or 2017 and so on. If we're calculating the CPI for the uh, the base year, 2015, or any base year for that matter, it will always be 100. The prices will be the 2015 prices, so the numerator and denominator are equal, they cancel out, and we're left with 100. Let's look at how we calculate the 2016 Consumer Price Index. Again, we'll use our 2015 basket in the denominator, we'll look at the cost of that basket in 2015. So that's our, using our 2015 prices. In the numerator, we'll be using the 2016 prices, these prices. We plug those into our formula. So here we have our 2016 prices. The quantities are the same. In the numerator and denominator, our base year basket. Do the calculation, we get 370 over 350 by 100. Our index for 2016 is 105.7. Remember it was 100 for 2015. We can do the same for 2017 and 2018. We have a very similar formula for 2017, except we have the 2017 prices. It's those prices there. Plug those values in. This time we get 400 over 350 times 100. Notice that the denominator stays the same for each CPI. For 2018, we have our 2018 prices. Do the calculation. And this time we get 117.1 for our index for 2018. We're putting that information together. So we have our cost of the basket in the base year, and then the cost of the basket in the, the following years. Our index is the ratio. So for 2015, it's 350 over 350 by 100. For 2016, 370 over 350 by 100. We saw that gave 105.7. Now we want to calculate the inflation rate, and it's important to remember that the inflation rate is something different to the index itself. It's the change in the price level. So for the 2016 inflation rate, 
we can see that we, if we subtract 100 from 105.7, we get the inflation rate. But it's not always that simple. This is our formula for the inflation rate. So it's the index for the current year minus the index for the previous year divided by the index for the previous year multiplied by 100. We can see why the calculation is simple for the year following the base year. We have the base year CPI would be just 100 there. That would cancel out. For 2017, the inflation rate will be the 2017 index minus the 2016 index divided by the 2016 index multiplied by 100. It gives us 8.1. See how that's calculated there? 114, the 2017 index minus 105.7, the 2016 index divided by the 2016 index multiplied by 100. Similarly, the 2018 inflation rate will be 117.1 minus 114.3 divided by 114.3 times 100. That gives us 2.5%. On to the GDP deflator. This is a different type of index. Here we're looking at the nominal GDP in a particular year. So we're looking at the whole GDP, all the components of the GDP, consumption, investment, government expenditure, and exports. We don't include imports here. So it's the goods that are produced in the economy. In the case of the GDP deflator, our numerator, our nominal GDP is just the value of GDP at current prices. In the denominator, we take the quantity of goods produced in this year and multiply those, that quantity by the base year prices. So we can see, unlike the CPI, where we have a constant basket of goods, for the GDP deflator, the basket of goods changes every year. Using our simple economy with two goods, our formula then for a particular year is, well, the nominal GDP, the prices and quantities of our goods produced in the economy for a particular year, divided by well, the quantity is produced in that year, but by the base year prices. Once again, though, for the base year, the numerator and denominator will be the same and cancel out, and our GDP deflator for the base year will be 100. For 2016, this time we're using the 2016 quantities and the 2016 prices in the numerator, in the denominator, We'll be using, well, the 2016 quantities, but the 2015, the base year prices. Putting those values in, so here we have the, the base year prices, but the, the current year, 2016 quantities. Doing the calculation, multiplying by 100, we get 105.4. For 2017, so again, we're it's the nominal GDP for 2017, prices and quantities for 2017. Looking at those quantities, 2017 quantities, but with the 2015 base year prices. So we see the quantities change from the 2016 index. Again, we do the calculation and we get 113.5. For 2018, we're using 2018 quantities but again, the base year prices in the denominator. Our GDP deflator for 2018 is 115. So here we, we've summarized that uh, information. We've got our nominal GDPs for each year. The real GDPs based on 2015 prices, or we could say that's the real GDP at 2015 prices. We've got the deflator series there. And again, we can calculate the inflation rate. The 2018 inflation rate is the 2018 deflator minus the 2017 deflator. We're looking at the price change between 2017 and 2018. So that's the difference. Divided by the 2017 deflator multiplied by 100. There are the figures. Because the CPI and the GDP deflator use different baskets of goods, CPI, 
the basket of goods that consumers purchase, the GDP deflator, the goods and services that make up the gross domestic product. When we calculate the inflation using these different uh, indexes, we'll have slightly different rates. The choice of whether we use in the inflation rate based on the CPI or the GDP deflator or some other index is determined by the type of analysis we're undertaking.